Okay. So, yeah, getting this thing started and getting right into it, how would you describe what it is that you do or what you talk about on your channel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, how to capture it in words. Mm. What do I do? <laughs> well, fundamentally, I just am. <laughs> and then all seems to flow from there. But this ground of being, which we are in truth, that intelligence, which I call love or mm. God, the divine, mm -hmm. the mystery, that which cannot be named. But we all know and experience just through our simple beingness that which is here guides it all. And yeah. so there's a flow, a flow of love. And that really is it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's an flow outpouring. The flow. Hmm. An, an outpouring. outpouring. Yeah. yeah. An outpouring of love. Mm, beautiful. That is quite beautiful. And this yeah. is what you do, isn't it, as well? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Going with the flow of love, the flow of God, that's for sure. It is quite beautiful. And uh, I try to translate that off camera as well, you know, to make that a lifestyle. To yeah. be with the flow of love, the essence of love. Amidst all situations in our life, I feel as though... Uh, that's the point, you know, that's kind of, that's the, if there is a point to this thing, that is the point is to be able to come to see God and live with God. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, and God is love. It really is. It's true. We're getting right into this talk. I'm <laughs> very impressed, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it is true. It is true. And it's not even love, right? Like, uh, like we see in the movies, you know, the mm -hmm. popular paradigm of love is past that. But for all that we can express it with words, yes, love seems to suffice a little bit. Yeah. And it's inclusive of that fairy tale love as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, life is in cam and is from, for the way I see this love affair. And, mm. you know, like the great mystics and Sufis, like Rumi, who everyone loves, or most people love and know, that great love for the beloved, which is our true nature. And living life as that is, you know, when miracles happen, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is the grand miracle. But yeah, then there are other, I guess you could say, many miracles that happen from that. But to mm -hmm. me personally, just being able to see that is the miracle. Um, let me ask you this one. How were you able to see this? Like, how did this come about being able to know that God is love, essentially? Where did this all come from for you? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just, you know, maybe I could say there are many things that I'm sure we can all say that there are many seeming events that lead up to a certain moment but it happened very spontaneously just yeah. a switch mm. a switch over and being given new eyes mm -hmm. like seeing through the eyes of god the beloved that is imminent here and this is what i call grace because it's really not our choosing what's not like a something we can do anything for no practice no you know concept yeah. it's mm. really just comes from that as unconditional love and yeah and you know and, and then at the same time i could say yeah there were many events that kind of prepared or 
we're opening the heart, you know, that's mm. being, yeah, ready to receive that because it's mm. a phenomenal moment when that comes, that recognition. Yeah. And it always is too. That's the thing. It's not only about the moment of when you see it, however that comes about, but it's a constantly renewed miracle every moment to know <laughs> that simply God exists. To know simply that that's real. And it's not like the God of um, the Old Testament per se, like this man in the sky with his puppet strings and he's the, the grand judge and the ruler of all. No, it's the supreme love that transcends everything, all dualities. It binds everything and everyone together. Always has and always will. Forever. What? That doesn't even make any sense. But that is the truth. And it really is, man. It's not just a fairy tale thing. And it's crazy because I don't know about you. I used to be um, atheist. I didn't believe in any of this stuff. Any mm -hmm. of that. Like nothing. Not. I was completely pragmatic, rational. Just wasn't on the wavelength of any superstition, as I thought. And then, I don't know, something switched, something changed. That is also hard for me to describe. Involved meditation and yogic practices, but somewhere along the way, I come to realize that, wow, this is, the sages are right. They're onto something. <laughs> and it's not just fairy tale, you know? It was too much outward looking for this, for the answers. And uh, when I turned it more inward, something switched. Because I think what switches is we see that we are a part of that God. It's not like something separate. And having some guy in the clouds, you know, up there, supreme, we're down here, humans on earth. It's like, no, once you feel that every essence, every fiber of your being, every cell, every sort of energy that is in your body is a part of this supreme, transcendent, unconditional love, like every single part of us, that's the big switch. To know and be still and know that you are God. You're not, maybe not all of God. But all, every part of you is a part of that God. And that, to me, is the miracle and the big switch. I don't know about you, but uh, mm -hmm. hallelujah to that, right? <laughs> hallelujah. And, yeah, it's every drop, every tiny drop of this human life is that. Yeah. Including the tender heartache, the pain, the sadness, the suffering. It's all that. And yeah, yeah you express it beautifully. I, I couldn't add anything, yeah. <laughs> anything else to that. Well, mm. thank you. Um, yeah. There's something about you, Kate. You have a very just welcoming spirit, just very warm. Um, I don't know. I can tell you definitely understand this. Like you're just your essence. And this is through the camera and through the, the screen. I feel it. You're very welcoming. Um, so I can tell that there's something about you that has that understanding. Um, let me ask you this one. Do you feel as though once somebody has this understanding, uh, their character changes in a way, as in they do become a little bit more compassionate, selfless, warm in their spirit? Like, is there once we do realize, once we are still enough to be able to see our true nature, is there something that comes about in the being of the character of Gary and Kate that is maybe a little bit different than before we were able to see this about ourselves? Mm. Yes and no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it's different for all of us, you know, but it's that which is truth has never changed and will never change. So it will always be the same. And yet for each of us, yes, for sure, the impact, the integration of that seeing, it ripples out throughout our life. And this can have, you know, it can be a profound change in everything. And on a certain level, we can say like nothing is happening, nothing changes, but then on another level, the whole life changes, you know, yeah. because the orientation is towards this. So 
and integrating that, experiencing it, embodying it fully in every every tiny aspect of your life. So, and that includes yeah. everything. Our relationships are, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. that's what I'm asking and what I'm getting at. The thread that we can kind of go down is what does this integration look like? And I know it is different for all of us. Obviously, mm. we're all there's billions of human beings. We are all different in our characteristics. Yet, I do feel as though there is a correlation because if there is one truth that we are all a part of, there has to be some sort of correlation in aligning to this one truth. Um, so do you feel as though there is a correlation in lifestyle that we could try to describe about once we do um, align with God, essentially? Yeah, so I can only speak from my direct experience and having, you know, being immersed in this, the whole life becomes orientated around truth. So it seems like the intelligence organizes for everything to support that. Yeah. Whether that's going to satsang, you know, like healing modalities that will support the body, psychotherapy, conversations like this, going to group gatherings where you're going to be amongst community with people who are also truth lovers. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, it does, the intelligence will, it's like a magnet, you know? Yeah. It's drawing in what you need, what we all need. And that obviously is different for each of us, but it seems like there's that universal kind of theme of go towards where you know you'll be deeply nourished yeah. on every level by other beings who are also on this path, by sages, masters, by, yeah, those who are just in the same kind of direction, you could say, because <laughs> the force in the, so to speak, other direction is also very powerful. So it's a very tender, very tender process. Mm-hmm. The integration, I would say. Yeah, well said. In that way, I see it also as a great simplification of life. If you're aligning with this said truth, and that is your one goal, your one intention, it's very simple in that way. It might not mm -hmm. be quite easy, but it's simple, at least from an intuitive sense, to know what aligns with that and what yeah. doesn't align with that. And also what seems to come from that personally speaking, and also from what I've witnessed in others, is a simplification in lifestyle, as mm -hmm. in look at monks. Monks are the exemplification of the simplification of lifestyle. They do whatever they got to do or get rid of whatever they don't need, is a better way to say it, in order to be aligned with this said truth. Um, and I feel as though, I don't think everybody has to become a monk, but I do feel as though we become sort of monk-like in that way. We orient to a simplification of lifestyle so that we can be in the light and not get lost in the dark, as you described. You know, it's a sort of balancing act, as, and we can be in that as much as we can. And I feel like in order to do that as much as we can, we just have to get rid of the noise and the hustle and bustle of life to the greatest extent, you know, to the greatest extent that we can. And uh, yeah, would you agree? Do you think there is a, or maybe from your point of view, from your perspective, is there, or has there been a simplification in your life? You know, yeah. less less doing of all the, the humanly stuff, the drama, and more so just simplifying, living monk-like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's quite funny because I, even as a child, I was quite like this, you mm -hmm. know? And very simple, like the simplicity was, is probably a theme throughout life. But, you know, like, like most of us, you kind of go through the phases and I am a lover of beauty. So <laughs> drawn to beauty and beautiful things and you know, that hasn't changed, but yes, there's simplification and actually the beauty becomes just, it, it's everything. It's the tiniest, tiniest, yeah, tiniest moments 
mm-hmm. that are rich with, yeah, that which we've spoken of. And so when you recognize that everything is steeped in that, you don't need so much. You know? Yeah. That's what you're pointing at, isn't it? It's like, we really don't need very much at all. And <laughs> yeah. Anything. Yeah, to live. Yeah. It's, it's like, and it seems like the the power of the heart will create, you know, the life to show you show us that that mm-hmm. yeah we have everything we need and whatever we need will be given. It will find us, and it's yeah, it's to surrender deeply to that is just phenomenal to experience mm-hmm. how taken care we are. You know? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, in that love, in that unconditional love of God is the essence that we are taken care of by this greater force always. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've all heard this before. You know, life starts to go from why is this happening to me to how is this happening for me? Everything seems to be happening for you in one way or the other, even amidst the darkness of our life, even amidst the suffering. And that's an important aspect I feel of the journey is we start to see our suffering and our woes, not so woe-ish, not so dark. We see how, how they can be an opportunity and a lesson for us to grow our relationship with God in the divine. That's a, another huge switch because we're all going to suffer, as the Buddha says. We're all going to go through some turmoil and tumultuous stuff throughout our life. So if we can... Uh, we, if we can brave the darkness and see God even in the darkness, yeah, that's what it's about. To be able to do that, and God allows us to do that. Really, I don't think there's any other way to go about it. To brave everything, all the ups and downs in life and our death, you got to go with God, man. Vaya con Dios. You have to. Um, yeah. Um I don't know what the point of the story was, but pretty much there's no other it's alternative. It's beautiful. Yeah. You. You're affirming what <laughs> is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, we probably already touched upon this. Do you feel like there's no other way to find the so-called happiness, peace, joy, harmony, in one's life and this is something that we're all yearning for we all want to be happy and enjoy life right is this the only way to go about it is to to find god (laughs) Mm. well that what we call god is organizing everything (laughs) so (laughs) it is facilitating the sense of being asleep mm. then the sense of waking up yeah and then yeah the play the dance between whatever whatever yeah. it's all that and that is unique for each of us how that will unfold in terms of what we need in order to to kind of rest within truth, peace, happiness. Because, you know, for many of us, it's like these habits of attention from a lifetime of being orientated towards a particular way, which may not be in service to happiness and peace, this sense of being a separate person who is suffering or, you know, is having a certain experience. The sense of being separate is, a ha- you know, a habit fundamentally that's, con- you know, due to the, for most of us, the, the context in which we're raised mm-hmm. from very early on, we're conditioned like that. And that isn't wrong. It's just how it is. But then to unravel that, wow, I mean, to, to begin to that deep exhale from constriction of limitation and being separate to begin to fall, you could say, these are kind of poetic words, but 
surrender into truth. It's like an unraveling of all these knots and, you know, mm. ways in which, yeah, the, the beingness has kind of held itself in a, a limited state. So as that unravels, we experience, it's the sense that we experience the greater, what is the peace as that penetrates through those knots of separation and we rest more deeply as that which we just always are. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. So essentially it's all going according to plan and, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all have our own journey here back to back home. I agree. Well, all is well. Yeah, all is well, right? Um, it's all perfect, as the sages say. It really is all perfect. You can't force this thing. <sighs> yeah. yeah. And to embody this, uh, and so it's not just like intellectual kind of, you know, because many of us know, but then the living it, this is profound, you know, as it becomes imminent, like the experience of, living as the beloved or living as truth, as this really becomes more and more alive in the body, you know, the body of life. It's, as we were speaking of the miracle starting, you know, and miracle will have like, for many people will be a word they just don't want to hear because <laughs> it's, it can, you know, conjure up all kinds of images, but and the way I speak of it, it's just the most ordinary, simple, day-to-day, mm -hmm. -day mundane becomes this direct communion with oh, that which is here. And it's so nourishing to live as that, you know? It's, yeah. You feel like... The Mother Earth, you feel the elements more richly, more deeply. You feel how the food is nourishing you on a cellular level, you know, the whole. It touches everything, the clothes we wear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes that detail, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's an ordinary miracle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It's simultaneously somehow the most miraculous thing that one can be bestowed upon. But yet, living in that essence is the most normal thing ever because it is, it's never left us, never will, never has in the past. Our true identity has never left us. I guess the miracle to me is the moment of discovery. But at that, after living, you know, as they say, before enlightenment, chop would carry water. After enlightenment, chop would carry water. So it goes, you know, so it goes. The mundaneness continues amidst the miracle. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a simultaneous play of living in the, the normal miracle of life. Yeah. <sighs> Powerful stuff. There's something uh, about you, Kate. You have a very warm spirit. I think I said it plenty of times. You're just <laughs> such a sweet being. Uh, mm. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing time with me. This is great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this heart loves to bathe in the truth. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a gift, isn't it, to to speak and, you know? Yeah. Just because it emphasizes it, you know, when... When we come together like this, it, you know, in a way glorifies it and raises it up and we feel that vibration and we feel that we are as one mm. living this together. And in these times on the earth right now, like, yeah, to sit like this together and, you know, turn ourselves towards that and... Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, from, from, from here, a great way to be in this world, you know? Yeah, I agree. 
to sit in truth with someone else for sure yeah to know what this is really what life is all about not the stuff you see on fox news not the competition the darkness war and yeah that's part of it that's part of the play of leela you could say yeah we said it's all perfect right but mm, i don't know yet it's like there's something so sweet about recognizing that oh that that is just part of the play like that is as long as you can you know the, the show goes on as long as you realize that there is a viewer to the show per se it's all of us to a, a sort of distance to the phenomena of life the ego orientation of life like you can kind of step back by yourself or with somebody else yeah there's so much glory in that there's just so much uh ease in in sitting with somebody in a meditative state like that for sure that's why i do these things mm. it's to just like you know i'm not just trying to look cool on youtube it's because <laughs> <laughs> it's because this is truly like a meditative this is sad enough for me to be able to yeah. have this exploration with somebody else so powerful you know this power in numbers even though we're all the same thing essentially it's all one there's still something about having another one here with you or even you know, three people four people you know i think it's multiplied by how many people you have um but point of the story is like connection and community is very important in these times and um especially on talking about you know dharma on this wavelength there's something very special about that um, about the word you know so yeah this is an honor for me to come on here and and do this and just kind of spew forth some some stuff that hopefully makes sense because the the crazy thing is right is we, we both recognize and we both enjoy talking about this stuff i do at least and we both recognize well we're both trying to speak about something that can't be named at the end of the day it's kind of like you know kind of like voldemort he's you know that which cannot be named you mm -hmm. just you can't you can you can try to talk about god all you want you can use labels such as love, Brahman, God, the infinite, source. There's many different, there's many, many different labels that sages amongst our time and times past have tried to describe it, yet it never does it justice. And there's some kind of joke in there for me that I've done over 200 episodes of these, enjoy every one of them. And yet there's never a point, like, what is the point? I don't know. It's like the point is to just be lost in the conversation and find that meditation in the conversation. There's something sweet about it that brings me into the moment. And uh, there's never really a point where, like, I've ever reached with somebody. Like, oh, yep, we got it. This We reached a point of this is it. We figured it out. Thanks, everybody. And we closed the show. So the, to me, it's almost like some kind of joke that we're playing. It's not a joke, not like a silly joke, not like a childish joke, but there's some kind of like cosmic joke of us coming on here, trying to describe what God is and never really getting it. <laughs> we, but we both recognize that we're never going to get it. So there's just something funny to me about that. I don't know what it is, but it is soothing either way. And I think that's really all that matters. And I would extend that to anybody listening. Um, Try it out yourself rather than just listening to two people on the internet talking about this stuff. Actually, find someone that you can connect with. You don't have to record it. Find someone that you can connect with and actually connect with them. <laughs> actually see what's going on. Ask them certain questions. Talk about this stuff. Talk about a little bit more than Game of Thrones and the Red Sox and stuff like that. that that's cool. That has its place. But really connect with somebody's heart and somebody's emotions and have them connect with you have this two-way street going on or three-way or four-way however many people and you come to find that there is something so profound something so easeful in that approach to conversation and approach with people there's just something so sweet so sweet about it and that's why i do it is because I don't know. It's almost, I was going to say it's like a drug, but it's not. That's a bad <laughs> connotation, but it is sort of, it gets me high, but not like, you know, not high like heroin or anything like that. It's hard to explain, but I would just recommend it to anybody listening. You know, if you don't want to listen to us anymore, just try it yourself. Have a really good,
good conversation, not on text, not on Reddit, like sit down, look in somebody's eyes and have a conversation and see what's going on with them and see, just see what happens. Let the moment take you. Um, yeah. That's all I got to say. I don't know if you have anything to say to that. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I just felt what you were pointing to is the presence. So the presence of being, which is the silence of being, which does the communication. Mm -hmm. You could say it's like the background. It's the home ground. It's the true body. And the true body is communicating. So we speak and we translate the energies, but... What's best, you know, the primary communication is the silence and that's inherent to all of us. It's the presence. So why we could, just as you were saying, just sit together and feel the, just the power of that, just because it's actually quite rare, you know, to actually come in touch with other beings who are really in presence because often the mind is somewhere else, you mm -hmm. know, the thoughts are kind of the dominant focus. So yeah. to be in, you know, and the thoughts can be there, but to be in presence, like really I'm with you. I'm here as you, for you, and not wanting you to be different, mm -hmm. not with any expectation of us to get something from this, exchange no point no meaning mm -hmm. <laughs> to it just us here together simple yeah no agenda and you know that's healing it's it's this is what is amazing about this is it's healing and that's yeah. the high that you speak about because on a cellular level it's like drinking the you know what i would say the nectar of love Hmm. which is alive in all of us. And yeah. as we kind of feel and receive, and it is like a flow between us and that nourishes the whole body. And it's the natural high that is available. <laughs> you know, it's the bliss of, of being. Hmm. Yeah. The bliss of being, the nectar of love. Mm. <laughs> yeah, those are two good book titles if you ever write a book. <laughs> if they're not already yeah. taken that's good uh, it's quite wonderful contrary to popular belief life is blissful it really is and it's so simple to be able to feel that because it's hidden in plain sight it's always here this this satya ananda you know truth consciousness bliss is Right here, it's staring you in the face. It is you. You are bliss itself. You are this this nourishing love itself. It's hidden in plain sight. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe, I mean, I was going to say problem it might not be a problem. It might just be the way of things. It might just be the order, as we described before. But what happens if I could describe it, is that nobody really tells us or shows us the way from a young age or has the recognition to be able to show us at the young age. So essentially we get conditioned into an illusion sense of self and we have to find this ourselves. We have to come back into this essence ourself in one way or the other, however it happens. But, you know, from age maybe two on, we get completely deconditioned and shrouded in a mystery of who we are. And uh, I guess that's the process and that's the path is coming back home into that. But maybe someday, I don't know if you think the same, maybe someday we'll reach a point, generations past us, where you're just, you're born into God, you're, you're in your natural state, which I think we all are, and you never get deconditioned out of it. This dark world that disillusions us from a young age won't be here and will be essentially born into heaven. Sounds like heaven to me. I don't know about you, but you know, being born in God and never forgetting God, yeah, that sounds like heaven. 
and maybe someday we'll be there maybe not maybe i don't know i'm not that's not up to me and i have no idea i have no prophecy alluding to that but can you imagine a world like that where we're all on this wavelength just i don't know i'm just entertaining the idea can you imagine in because this is so sweet like i said being able to speak to you and finding somebody that is in the state of presence it's like ah oh, it's like oh of course yes you feel so great in their midst right well what if all eight billion of us or however many people are going to be on earth in generations from now what if all of us are on this wavelength it, it wouldn't work the world wouldn't look how it looks it would be completely we live on an alien world it wouldn't look like it but there's something in my heart that says like that's going to be a thing someday. Someday, maybe hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years later. Who knows? You know, we all know about the yugas. Maybe someday we will reach a point where we're all on this wavelength. And how beautiful would that be, huh? I mean, it is beautiful and it's all perfect, like we said. But yet, if we could all see it, I don't know. Yeah, it's a beautiful prayer, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, you you chant the Gayatri Mantra, or I'm saying you, but if we take something like the Gayatri Mantra, and we take that into our heart, that's the prayer for all beings, may all beings be peaceful, happy, free. But then simultaneously we know we do nothing, <laughs> nothing about that, but yet it doesn't, it doesn't stop the prep. Yeah. And it doesn't um, stop going, you know, sharing. And because the more intense it is on earth and the more stuff, you know, it's like not denying suffering because there are many beings who are in extreme pain and suffering right now. So simultaneously with that is also rising a huge amount of help and support through vessels like you and this channel and you know other beings who are it's like they rise together so the darker it is the greater you know it also comes together and who knows what how it will unfold but just that prayer in the heart knowing we're not separate mm -hmm. that we're with those beings who are you know, in the most horrific situations right now on the planet. And it's holding that, but then simultaneously knowing we can only live the life in which we're placed, wherever we are, Yeah. sharing what feels true, authentic within our context, you know? Yeah. Mm. There's one side of me that knows that, that there's really nothing that I can do, unfortunately, to know, it, my heart aches to know that there's just many, many people that are suffering. And uh, there's nothing that I could really do other than, like you said, we do our thing here in our own life, but it's tough because I see myself in everyone. I've yeah. had moments where like, I feel humanity is suffering, all of it just, it's so painful. I just have to sob uncontrollably, to be honest. It's so yeah. tough. Yeah, there's nothing we can do, and it's all going according to plan, like we said. So it's this weird, it's this weird dichotomy in my head that it's like it's all perfect, but damn. Yeah, and it's imperfect as well. I think perfectly that's perfectly imperfect. Yeah, the clarity because it's like being clear that all of this is a paradox, really. I mean, mm -hmm. on us, as we know from the fundamental level, it is, but. It is imperfect, and there, that imperfection of humanity is integral to the journey because, well, for, for no reason, it just is. <laughs> the imperfection is all around us. Mm. And, yeah, it's, it's a, this is such a powerful topic, isn't it? Because it's where we come into that where it's surrender and then also action where that arises from mm -hmm. and doing what you can in your own way 
yeah. is enough, you know, like yeah. some, for some beings, the capacity to go and do kind of phenomenal acts of charity or, you know, the life will orientate that way to be able to have a like huge impact on a big scale. Mm-hmm. But then for others, it's like, will be totally different, but it will be not better or worse. You know, it will have as much impact through the mm-hmm. tiny things, you know, like, you know, the yogis in the Himalayas sitting in the cave, you know, their energy system, what they're doing for the planet. But then also beings just working in supermarkets, mm-hmm. offices, you know, just the kindness, the love, the care. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. I feel as though that's where it really shines through. It's in the small moments. That's where God shines through. And the potential is always there, no matter what. No matter what the phenomena is in our life, the potential is always there. And in that way, again, it's quite simple that in any situation, any of our dealings, you could resonate with God. Even if it's just like, I don't know, holding the door for somebody yeah. or, or maybe tipping your barista or say, smiling at somebody, asking somebody how their day is, just simply having a conversation in those little moments. Yeah, that's how we change the world. All of us. Yeah, you don't have to go and become the president or invent some crazy thing or create a charity. The charity is in every moment. Yeah, it's so true. It's beautiful in that way too. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. This is a really great talk, Kate. Um, I appreciate you coming on here. I think I said that enough. <laughs> but yeah, I really do. Uh, let me ask you this one. What Do you have any plans for the future? Like, Where are you going to take your spirit and your energy and your work? Because I know as we're speaking right now, I, it seems to be quite recent that you started making videos. I don't know what else you got going on. Um, would you want to disclose anything else? Do you have anything else? Uh, in in the works. So I have no, you know, kind of sense of the future. Mm-hmm. Life is here, and I see that whatever needs to happen, it's coming from the heart. In the moment. And. Yeah, so I don't plan so much. Yeah. You know, it's like spontaneity, the adventure (laughs) is alive and that guides the way, you know, like in terms of whatever wants to unfold, but it's all here, just Mm -hmm. the attention. And this is where the beauty of life is calling always to this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if the need to, you know, that doesn't exclude practical plans, but Mm. it's the Mm. flow is here. Yes. I had a feeling you were going to say something like that. <laughs> Predict- predictable. <laughs> predictable and, you know, spontaneous at the same time. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Spontaneous predictability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that though. Yeah, living in that essence. Like you said, it also doesn't negate planning. There's basic planning, but maybe it's a lack of, for me personally, personally speaking, it's a lack of conditionality to the planning. As in, I still make plans. We have to make plans to have this talk, you know, but if this didn't happen, whatever. And so forth. It goes on into other parts of my life. If it does or doesn't happen, whatever. Still here in the moment, in the flow and in the nourishment of God. So there's a lack of like, if I do do something, if I get something or if I don't, there's a sort of equanimity because God's there no matter what or God's here no matter what. Um, and in that 
is beautiful. And in that also does arise some kind of spontaneous creativity. There is this like downloads you could say that come from being in the flow of the moment. Intuitive downloads, subtle whispers of the intuition that come through. And if your mind isn't quiet enough, if you're too much in the past or the future, the noise, the discombobulated noise of the past and the future, trying to get somewhere, trying to be somebody, or regretting the past, things such as that, uh, you're not going to be able to hear the subtle whispers of intuition that God speaks to you with. So I agree. True creativity, I feel, comes from being still in the moment. The planning's still there, but still, it's just, it's a different essence that's difficult to describe. But I think creators know what I'm talking about. Artists, true art, comes from just being in the moment and siphoning something from the moment. Sort of spontaneity. And it's not like childish spontaneity. It's not naivete. It's like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Yeah, you can't explain it. It just is like the like we were saying, the there seems to be like this opening that happens to mm -hmm. this phenomenal intelligence and capacity as a human being. You know, like human beings are phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. what this human body is capable of. It's magic. And actually, most most of us live in in just this tiny, tiny little <laughs> percentage of what that is. But as this intelligence wakes up and permeates the whole being, you know, like mm -hmm. that creative spark, which is everywhere, always in everything, but you know, it will make itself felt through everything we do. And it's not just like, you know, making art or whatever, but it's yeah, whatever we do whatever. becomes creative. It's like, you know, the simplest mm -hmm. things like we've been saying throughout, it's all creative. Yeah. It's all Shakti. It's all, mm -hmm. you know, what I call the divine mother, who is the, the creative principle mm -hmm. of that. And life sings and with that energy and we are all vessels for that. And so allowing that to come forward mm. and to say allowing is not really accurate, but it, it naturally will just bubble up the softer we come, you know, yeah. listen to that still, still silent space <laughs> that which has no name you know in the heart and yeah silent guidance from the heart yeah leads to some kind of effortless living and effortless creativity life becomes the art mm -hmm. it really does the art of living i actually spoke to somebody about that yesterday and we agreed Life becomes the art form, truly. Every moment is created on the canvas of our lives. Quite beautiful. It is true, though. Well, let me ask you this, because I asked you this to the person yesterday. Um, if life is art, what is art? How would you describe what art is? Mm, I would say you. You are art. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> and art is, you know, everything. And yet there are flavors of that. There are particular ways of channeling art that each of us will be drawn to in a different way. And you know, like mm. we both have a love of words and the spoken word. So that's a form of art, the speaking. 
For others, it will be food. For others, painting, mm. conversation. You know, it just, as we were saying, it's everything. Yeah. It's an art form. But it's what's becomes clearer is within that is such an appreciation. Mm. Art, for, for me at least, is devotion. You know, it's being so devoted to <laughs> love, yeah, beauty, yeah. truth. And from that devotion, it flows out and, yeah. Amen. Can't help but express it, all of us, you know, in our own way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Devotion. It's a good point. It's devotion. Yeah. And art is just our, our way that we live. It's the whatever way that creativity wants to flourish and blossom that is the art form it's constantly evolving too that's the thing it's hard to pin down like this is or this is an art so as we evolve and we live in the moment art also evolves so yeah we are the art form mm. yeah and it's like a celebration it's a mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. offering or you know and an affirmation a giving thanks or Gratitude. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm alive and I can make something, you know? Yeah. Whatever that is. It's like I'm a human being moving my body and I can, yeah. Yeah. Make this life beautiful and hmm. it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal, to say the least. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? On that note, I think we can probably start to wrap it up. I think we've mm -hmm. said everything we need to say. Mm -hmm. It is quite phenomenal. The art of living, the art of our lives. We are all artists in our own way. We are the art and the artists at the same time. Hmm. Well, do you have anything else you want to say, Kate? I don't. I've said everything I needed to say and ask everything I needed to ask. Do you have mm -hmm. anything you want to get off your chest? <laughs> no, just blessings and you know, just may this exchange, this flow, this love touch all beings who need to hear it in a way that is deeply nourishing. And we hold that prayer that we spoke of for mm -hmm. all beings wherever they are, that they experience this. And yeah, thank you for inviting me. Of course. To celebrate. <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> Enjoy exactly. this, which is the, you know, a gift beyond all gifts. <laughs> yes. I never looked at these as a celebration, but now I will. It's a celebration. <laughs> it's like a mini party, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, I thank you for coming on here and uh, joining me in this celebration. I think you are a wonderful soul. So I wish you all the best. Please keep doing your thing. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of people will resonate with your words and your energy in the future. So I really encourage you to please keep doing your thing. And uh, yeah, I think you have a bright future ahead of you. But hey, it's not about the future, right? It's here and now. <laughs> well, um, yeah, Kate, uh, that's it. I think mm. I said thank you enough, but thank you. Seriously, namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Love, love, love. love Thank love. you for doing what you do as well. It's a beautiful gift. For sure. And uh, yeah, I thank anybody that listened this long. I wish <laughs> you all the best. Peace and love to you. Peace and love. That's all I got to <laughs> say. See ya.